Hey everyone, this is my immediate reaction after watching Terminator Zero, a new Terminator spinoff, an animated Netflix series. Um, listen, the Terminator franchise hasn't been in the best place in a long time. Uh, I, honestly, I think there's only really two good Terminator movies, the, the first one and the second one, which are amazing uh, sci-fi action films, although the, the first movie is, is has, certainly has a lot of uh, horror sensibilities. Well, kind of sets it apart from the rest of the franchise. But I feel like so many of the other entries have just trying to be like Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and, and because of that fact, um, they, they fail, along with just being poorly written and acted and, and directed. But Terminator Zero, much like uh, Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles uh, before it, it chooses to do something new, um, but also incorporate familiar things as, as well. And I feel like changing up the medium was smart. Instead of going the live action route, instead of doing a live action TV series or just making another film, I think making this in an anime uh, was a smart aesthetic choice and also setting most of the series in Japan I thought was really cool I mean I like the whole general premise where you're following this um, this in, in, inventor uh, this this genius who creates another artificial intelligence uh, which which rivals uh, Skynet and actually makes Skynet quite fearful and I think that in itself is a really interesting idea and brings something new to the franchise in general. It's like, yes, yes, you, you, you get a Terminator in this, um, uh, voiced by Timothy Oliphant, who I think does a great job. You know, you have your you know resistance fighters fighting against Skynet. You have someone sent back in the past and run all this stuff from happening. But it's the, it's the new aesthetic and it's these new um, plot lines introduced that make this series so refreshing. And I think establishing a new rival AI that Skynet is quite fearful of is really inspired and really cool. And also just setting in the country of Japan itself. You know, they really get into the cultural aspects, the societal aspects of the country, how that affects certain things. The fact that, you know, you know, firearms aren't readily uh, available. So how do you defend yourself against uh, Terminator? How does a Terminator uh, um, ob obtain certain weapons? And they, and they show that. And that in itself, I think, is really cool and, and, and really, really interesting. I mean, you've got a pretty large uh, cast of characters, and I think uh, most of them are pretty thoroughly developed. There's, there's a, a lot of scenes where characters are sitting down and having conversations, and I think maybe for some that might be a little dull, a little boring, but, you know, honestly, I, I think uh, the Terminator franchise has been missing those, those character moments where people are establishing these really complicated and, and emotional relationships. So I'm, I'm so I'm so appreciative of the fact that the series, you know, went out of its way to have these characters talk to each other so much. And, it, and you get a better sense of them and understanding of them. So I thought that was great where you, yeah, you have this, you know, this this inventor and, and his family. Um, and, you know, eventually, of course, they're, they're separated as as Skynet goes online, as Judgment Day actually happens. But Japan is in a very interesting position because of the new AI that's developed and that is set in, in that country. And uh, all the dynamic between those characters, I think, is, is, is quite good. And um, I really enjoyed just the, the journey that they, all, that they all went on while also just dealing with a, a Terminator that is pr pursuing them. You know, trying to stop this new AI from going online and, you know, potentially ruining and endangering uh, the mission of, of Skynet. The animation itself, itself and the aesthetic, I, I think, is good. There are some times where this is from um, Production IG, I believe, who's probably best known for making uh, Ghost, in, uh, Ghost in the Shell, a standalone complex, which is a fantastic series. I actually think it's even better than... Um, and then the Ghost in the Shell movie, which might be sacrilegious to say for some people. But I really like that show. And a lot of their uh, best aspects are on full display in this series. If I have any major criticisms of the show, like nothing to do with like the, the setting, uh, the plot lines, the, the characters, you know, what they're playing around with, you know, the cultural and societal aspects. Really, um, the only criticism I have is that they do use a lot of CGI to kind of cut corners and probably get this series out as fast as they obviously uh, did. And I would have preferred if it was just more traditional, you know, that 2D, you know, anime, you know, animation. I think that would have looked uh, better. Um, but despite some of the CGI that they use, the thing that that works so much about this show is that it brings so many new things 
to the franchise itself. You know, uh, yes, it has those familiar aspects that, you know, from the Terminators to the time travel, you know, all, all of that, of course. I mean, a little bit of the familiar this uh, uh, familiar theme place, of course, although they don't overuse it. That's the other thing. They don't really do too many callbacks. And when they, even if they do a callback, you might even miss it. You might even realize it. Or they do their own kind of twist and spin on it. They don't make it obvious like, well, some recent legacy sequels. Uh, it's very smart. And um, that just comes through in, in these eight episodes, which they're all about 22 to 25 minutes. It, it has a, uh, a very nice pacing, in, in my opinion. And uh, being by the end, you, you, you want even more. You know, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the second season of the show. And they very much uh, set up a, a second season, which I'm sure would be filled with more uh, twists and, and turns. But yeah, overall, I, I think this this series does something that the franchise, the Terminator franchise, has not done uh, in quite some time, which is be good, <laughs> which is to be interesting again, which is to, yes, incorporate familiar things that we've seen before, but introduce some new stuff that makes it feel fresh and, and new. And lastly, I also like that so much of this show incorporated something I feel like has been missing from the franchise ever since the really the first film, after the first film, which is horror. There's a lot of horror moments in this, and it can get very scary, and they do create some really cool sequences uh, with the Terminator as it's pursuing our, our main characters and just decimating, just brutally killing so many innocent people that are trying to stop it. So, yeah, uh, outside of some wonky CGI at times, I feel like this series does everything else right. Uh, aesthetically, I think it looks really great. I really enjoy the characters. The Terminator is very scary. They introduce some new elements to it that expand on 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 just the, on the world and um, and just the and, and Skynet itself. I love the idea that they gave it a rival. I think that was very very smart. And uh, with Kokoro, uh, who is the the new kind of like a Skynet esque character, which is very interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's my immediate reaction to Terminator Zero. I'll be sure to do a much longer review. Um, probably tomorrow, so you guys will hear that. I want to go in more in depth with these characters and who they are, what defines them, but you know, can only say so much in an immediate reaction. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the the show, and I'll see you next time.